Hey guys, I know it's been a while, but it's uh, been busy and uh, things like that, so I'm sorry I haven't been able to film lately um, in, in the last uh, couple, I think it's been almost a week and a half, I think, before I posted last. Um, but anyway, um, sorry about that, I got tons of new videos here lined out for you guys that I know that you'll enjoy, um, deck profiles plus a box opening, and um, so um, I'm going to just jump straight into this. This one, obviously, as you can tell by the annotation, is going to be my Blade Master uh, Kagiro deck. This is something that I was really excited for. Blade Master has always been a card that I really, really liked, even though when he originally came out in set one, when people would open their packs of set one, specifically people who play Kagiro, when they were getting into set one, they were digging for the cross, and people, if they pulled... Uh, the Blade Master, they just threw him to the side or threw him in the literally threw him in the trash, or at least that's what they did at my locals. And I picked all the Blade Masters up because I liked how Blade Master looked, and I knew one day he would be good, and I knew he could be good to use in other Kagero decks. I mean, it's he's a really good card, and um, so I'm very happy he got more support. And now I think it's funny that a lot of people are flocking to him because he's now all of a sudden good, which is kind of hypocritical, but, you know, <laughs> anywho, um, so anyway, we're going to jump straight into this, I've playtested this quite a bit, I really enjoy the deck, it's extremely consistent, you're going to tick your opponent off by continually taking away their board, and it's very, very tough for them to deal with, so anyway, let's just jump straight into this. So for the starting Vanguard, I am using Dragon Knight Sajay, Dragon Knight Sajay, um, the reason I like this one better than, uh, the Blaze one is because this doesn't cost you a thing, um, and he, uh, helps with retiring. Um, four runner skill, when a grade one rides him, you know, slide him anywhere you want. <clears throat> Whenever, uh, you retire a rear guard by an effect, you can take him and place him in the soul, and then your opponent must destroy another one of their rear guards. So you can use him to turn a one retire into two, and it can just get you that more board wipe. So really, really good. This is, uh, in my opinion, the best option, um, for the starter for a Blade Master deck, but, um... Uh, the Blaze one is an okay one. If some people who are real scared about not drawing grade, gr grade threes, uh, Red Pulse is okay, but by far this is my favorite. So. For the grade zeros triggers, we first are playing four copies of Dragon Knight Jeanette. This is the Blade Master critical trigger. So, uh, whenever he's on the rear guard, when your Blade Master Vanguard attacks, you may place him in the soul, draw one card, and your Blade Master Vanguard gains plus 5,000 power. So, it gets you a little extra boost and gets you a free card, so it replaces himself, which is really, really nice. So, um, and plus this deck, a couple of the cards do use the soul, so it's nice to uh, be able to build the soul if you need to. Then we're playing four of the original Kagero triggers, the uh, Embodiment of Spear Tar, and these are set one rares. They've uh, been with me since I've started this wonderful game, and I decided to break them back out, and it's because whenever you need that one critical trigger, Tar is always there. So, so eight crits, and then we're playing four copies of Gatling Claw Dragon. Um, you can probably guess the rest. I mean, um, because Gatling Claw Dragon is by far still, in my opinion, the best draw trigger in the game. Um, just because he pick, he picks off um, pesky starters that are out there in the format. You can uh, I'd still say Chrono Dran is a pretty threatening one. Um, you know, I mean, I'm sure there'll be more coming out. I mean, there, there's just starters in general now are very, very annoying to deal with. So we have Gatling Claw. And for the last one, we're playing four copies of Mother Orb Dragon. So um, I do play um, uh, the Legend in this deck, and you might be asking why I'm not using Flame Dragon Grits. It's not because... It's just because... Um, this deck, I just really don't want... I'd rather keep the crits in there. Um, but my Flame Dragon... Uh, I do have Flame Dragon heal triggers, so if I want to add this to my hand to use for a G-Guard, that possibility is there. So, Anywho. 8 crit, 4 draw, 4 heal. 
grade ones. We're playing four copies of Protect Orb Dragon for RG Perfect Guards. Um, this deck does have counter uh, 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 recyclability for your counter blast, thanks to our new grade one uh, uh, na uh, natal. Um, but <clears throat> I still like having Protect Orb just because um, Kagro always wants resources to be able to spend. Um, so we can continually keep counterblasting and keep killing off things. That's what our clan's best at, so that's why we continue to make sure we have that option available to us. Um, next, we play four copies of Dragon Knight Natal. This card is so good. Um, this is really what Kagro needed, especially Blade Master, to stay consistent. Um, it, uh, it's one of the cards in the deck that introduces Kagro's keyword, Blaze. So uh, his skill is once per turn... Uh, when your opponent's rear guard is put into the drop zone due to the effect of a card, if you have a vanguard with Dragonic Blade Master in its card name until the end of turn, this unit gets the auto skill of when your vanguard becomes blazing, uh, counter charge one, and this unit gets plus 4,000 until end of battle. So, as we know, blazing, all that means is if your vanguard is blazing, that means if that means uh, you, the, the Kagro player, has more rear guards than your opponent. Um, and since this deck can essentially wipe out two to three rear guards every single turn, um, it's simple to get into a blazing state. And this lets you get counter blasts back, and it becomes an 11k booster or 11k attacker. Because um, there have been times where I've literally stuck two of these in the same column. So, um, so I can. This is just a very, very, very good card. Next, we're playing four copies of Lava Flow Dragon, and of course, we're using the gorgeous uh, promo signed ones. Um, Kagro Stride Enabler, discard it out of your hand, becomes grade three, also can help us search out Blade Master, because he is the boss of this deck. Um, but uh, the backup grade three for this deck um, is also very good. So, um, And in some matchups, I do prefer having my backup, which you'll see that in a second. And for the last grade one is I'm playing two copies of Dragon Mage Ginkaku. His skill, uh, Generation Break 1, whenever a rear guard is retired due to an effect, he gains plus 5,000 power, and that effect stacks. So if you pop off three rear guards during your main phase with Blade Master Stride skill and uh, Blade Master's... Uh, stride uh the, the blade master stride um he will gain 5,000 power for each unit drop so you can get him up to a 11k 16 21k booster real easy and he's a real nightmare to have in the back row there so <clears throat> really really good card and he's counter blast for he doesn't cost a thing so the only downside is he's a 6k, but I genuinely like to stick um, stick him behind my Vanguard or stick him behind a rear, um, you know, first you get him behind the Vanguard so your Vanguard's always swinging really big, but... <clears throat> Grade 2s, we're playing four copies of Radiant Dragon. This is the uh, Dragonic Blade Master Glimmer Clone. Um... His ability is Generation Break 1, Counter Blast 1, and Soul Blast 1. When this unit is placed on the rear guard, if you have a Vanguard with Dragonic Blade Master in its card name, you may pay the cost. If you do, choose up to one of your opponent's grade 1 or less rear guards and retire it. Until the end of turn, this unit gets plus 2,000 power. And he also gains the skill of, if your Vanguard is blazing, this unit gets plus 2,000 power for each of your opponent's open rear guards. So if you play this right, you can call this out pop something, he'll gain 2,000 power because you paid the cost for his skill, so he'll go to 11. And if all of your opponent's rear guards are open, he gains 10k on top of that, so he can be 21 by himself. So you can really get this guy up real big and real scary to where your opponent is going to have to sometimes even burn a G-Guardian just to protect themselves from him, which is really, really good. Next, we're playing three copies of Berserk Lord Dragon. This card works really well in this deck. Um, you might be saying, why not use um, uh, Twilight Arrow? I like Twilight Arrow, and I even have three. I even got three SP Twilight Arrows to put in this deck. But the reason that I prefer him is he one, he doesn't need a boost, and um, he 
Twilight Arrow requires that he attacks the Vanguard. Um, his skill activates when your Vanguard attacks. So I just like that better. And pl and plus, I like Berserk Dragon from the old school Kagero days. And to see him get evolved and looking much more badass is really cool. So I like Berserk Lord Dragon a lot. He's um, definitely a good card. I know some people actually have reverted to using the old Berserk Lord Dragons, like the original one. Um, because now counterblasting is really easy, but I, I tried that. I didn't like it. I just prefer this. That's just me. Um, then for grade, the rest of the grade twos, we're playing two copies of Dragonic Neo Flame. Um, this card is just, um, I've sang this card's praises many, many times. Um, I just love Neo Flame because in the early game, he can be a threat. Um, he's not generation break restricted. Um, he's just a good, solid Kagero card that I think could be played at two or three in any Kagero deck in general. Um, he's easily one of my top ten favorite Kagero cards by far. And I just love having him because there are some times where your opponent will literally just ditch out so much shield just so that he doesn't happen. And there are still players to this day that forget um, how he works. Um, you know, um, where if the unit in front of him is retired, that means by battle too. So you can really, really mess with them. But um, just love Neo Flame. Can't really. I just love Neo Flame to pieces. Um, and then for the last grade two, is I'm playing two copies of the original grade two 10K vanilla Dragonic Knight Nahalem. And of course, we have the rare from set one. Um, I just love Nahalem. Um, Nahalem has always been, he's, again, he's probably one of my top 10 cargo cards too, just because I love his artwork and especially this one. Um, with all the decks out in the format right now that are just, that are, that are just a straight rush, it's good to be able to just ride this and sit on it and let your opponent basically try to get up to hit you because most of the time your opponent's going to ride a grade 2 with a 5k boost and hit 14 and you can just drop that 10k shield and say no pass. So, it's just a good out good thing to have. I mean, I've actually, I'm, I've also considered also maybe going to three Nahalem. And worst case scenario, even with a Ginkaku or Natal behind this, you can get him up to 22-21, so it's still not a bad option to have. And for grade threes, obviously we are playing the four copies of Dragonic Blade Master. This is our uh, boss monster, I guess you can say. Um... I'm still looking for more SPs of this because I only have one of them at the moment. So if anybody out there has SPs, let me know. <laughs> um, so first off, his generation break is real easy to get off, which is why I love him so much. Um, during your turn, if the number of rear guards if your opponent has it is less... Uh, during Wow. During your turn, if the number of rear guards you have is more than your opponent, this unit gets plus 5k and 1 crit. So real easy to get off in a Kagro deck because you're always continually taking away their rear guards so you can make him hit his generation break skill real easy. And then his stride skill is during your turn when your G unit strides, you may pay the cost of counterblast 1. If you do, choose one of your opponent's rear guards and retire it. So just a uh, easy... Problem solver, and with Natal, his skill becomes free. So, um, essentially. Um, but, you know, can't really say enough about Blade Master. I, I love this card. And I even had a Blade Master deck profile on here beforehand, um, uh, before all the Blade Master support got announced. So, um, I, I've always just loved this card. Um, he just looks so, so freaking up, so freaking cool. And then for my backup grade 3 for this deck, what I've been running right now is I'm playing four copies of Dragonic Overlord, the Legend. Um, I'm still looking for two more uh, Eternal Blaze stamped ones, so if anybody has those, let me know. Um, so I'm pretty sure we all know what the Legend does by right now, but I'll read them for, just for the lulls. Um, so once per turn, Generation Break 2. Counterblast 1, choose a grade 3 or greater Flame Dragon from your hand and discard it until the end of the turn. This unit gets plus 15,000 power, plus 1 grade, and plus 1 drive. And then also, um, at the end of the battle that this unit attacked a rear guard, you may discard 3 cards from your hand if you do stand this unit so he can attack twice and get triple drive both times, which is really good and can really rebuild a hand fast. Um, and then his other skill... Um, is uh, when this unit is placed on the Vanguard Circle, you can pay the cost. If you do, which is counter blast one, soul blast one, 
Uh, search the top five cards of your deck for a flame dragon, reveal it to your opponent, add it to your hand, and then shuffle your deck. So just by riding him, you can get an instant plus. Um, and I play enough flame dragons in the deck to uh, make him viable. Uh, Blade Master, um, Gatling Claw, Mother Orb, per your, per your perfect guards are flame dragons, um, your stride enablers, um, your... Uh, Radiant Dragons and Neo Flame and uh, uh, Berserk Lords, so there's still plenty of targets for the for him to hit. So, but um, some people um, have asked, you know, well, you play Neo Flame, why not try the Great? Um, I have contemplated maybe playing two Legend, two Great, but I just right now the Legends working fine, and um, I I like that little plus that you get, but I might actually try that. So. Okay, for the G zone. <sighs> do, 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 do. Okay, for the G zone, for the deck, we play one copy of Supreme Heavenly Emperor Dragon uh, Vortex Desire. Um, so, Vortex Desire, um, in my opinion, is just a really, really good card. He's just a very good, very first stride for this deck because he lets you flip up a card um, and he doesn't cost anything um, except obviously a flip, but that that uh, is helpful for your Blade Masters. Um, so, uh, skill is uh, uh, when this unit attacks a Vanguard, uh, choose a face down card from your G-Zone and turn it face up. Uh, if you do, until the end of the battle, this unit gets the skill of when this unit's attack hits a Vanguard. For each Flame Dragon on your Vanguard circle, choose up to one of your opponent's grade two or less rear guards and retire it. So you're going to be able to pop two rear guards if you hit. So that's nice. Um, so, And then um, next we're playing four copies of Supreme Heavenly Emperor Dragon... Dragonic Blade Master Titan. Um, and I want to thank my teammate Christian because he was able to get me at, uh, out of the one box. He got a uh, SP Titan and it looks absolutely gorgeous. Um, so Titan is an amazing card and he is such a good card for Kagero in general. Um, skill is uh, Generation Break 2. Um, Counterblast 1, choose... Uh, Counterblast 1 and choose a face down card from your G zone to turn it face up. Choose up to the same number of your opponent's rear guards as the number of face up uh, cards named Supreme Heavenly Emperor Dragon, Dragonic Blade Master Titan in your G zone. Retire them until the end phase of this turn. This unit gets uh, plus one critical. So, um, really, really good. You can use them as your second. Um, after your first stride, you can instantly go into him and start popping two units at once with him. Three if you chain it with uh, Blade Master's stride skill. So just such a such a such a such an amazing card is Titan. I love him. I, I just I can't say enough about this card. Um, so really really good card. If you have not picked up these yet, I highly suggest you do, especially if you're a Kagura player. Next, we play four copies of Tr Transcendence Divine Dragon Novel Vague Express. I'm still not the biggest fan of this card's freaking name, but he is definitely um, a great asset to have and one that every Kagero player should use. Um, so his ability is Generation Break 2... Um, into, uh, act ability, Counter Blast 1, choose a face-down card called... Transcendence, Divine Dragon, Novel, Express in your G zone and turn it face up. Until the end of the turn, this unit gets during the battle that this unit attacks a Vanguard. Your opponent cannot call Grade 1 cards from their hand to the Guardian Circle. And the continuous effect of during your turn, if the number of cards in your opponent's damage zone is 5 or more, all of your opponent's triggers effects are nullified. So if your opponent's at 5 damage and this successfully hits them, there's no way they can heal out of it. It will guarantee you the win. So for that reason alone, he's definitely an asset that every player that plays Kagro should abuse. Um, so such a, such a good card. Um, then we're playing two copies of Supreme Heavenly Emperor Dragon, Dragonic Overlord the Ace. Um, I'm not playing a straight Overlord deck, so there's no reason to play four Ace. 
um, but I still uh, am able to get Ace off fairly frequently. Um, and I do still like playing him because having a re-stander is always a um, something that's really helpful. Um, and these are the cool generation rares, not that ugly common that we got with the Legend deck. Blech. Um, so, Axe Skill, Counter Blast 2, and choose a face-down card named Supreme Heavenly Emperor Dragon Dragonic Overlord the Ace from your G-Zone and turn it face up. If the number of face-up cards in your G-Zone is two or more, until the end of turn, this unit gets minus one drive, and, um... At the end of the battle that this unit attacked a vanguard, you may discard two cards from your hand, one card that is an overlord card, and one that is any other card, and if you do, stand this unit, and it gets plus 5,000 power until end of turn. So, real easy to do in this deck, especially um, since we do play the legend. So, I mean, I mean, in theory, you're only playing four overlords, but you also play the stride enabler so it is still fairly easy to get his skill off it's not as hard as you might think um and i and i still like having it so then that's all the strides i play for g guardians um i'm playing two copies of flame emperor dragon Ki dragon king um azel orb dragon um azel orb dragon's the one from fighters collection if your opponent has four or less rear guards he guards for 20 so as long as their field's not full he guards for uh 20k Next, uh, two copies of Flame Wing Steel Beast Denial Griffin. Um, this is one of the two new G Guardians we got with um, uh, uh, Set Seven. Um, such a such an amazing card. This is by far um, so one of the best cards Kagro has. Um, its ability is when this unit is placed on the Guardian Circle, you may counterblast one. If you do, choose one of your opponent's attacking rear guards and retire it. So you don't even have to be able to successfully guard the attack. If you have a heal trigger in your hand, you can discard it, call this, kill it. And um, such a good card. And for the final card, may might get some uh, mixed reactions about this one. But I'm playing one copy of Supreme Heavenly Emperor Dragon, Defeat Flare Dragon. And it is the gorgeous secret rare one. Um, so people might be wondering why I'm playing this, because this is not a full Overlord deck. But in the case that I do ride my Overlord, this is live. Um, so I'm going to read him to you um, and make sure you really listen, because people sometimes confuse this effect. Um... Counterblast one and choose two grade three or greater flame dragons from your drop zone and put them on the bottom of your deck in any order. When this unit is placed on the guardian circle and uh, when this unit is placed on the guard circle during the battle, uh, your vanguard with overlord in its card name is attacked by your opponent's vanguard. You may pay the cost. If you do, retire all of their all of the rear guards in your opponent's back row. So you have to have an overlord vanguard, and they have to be attacking your overlord vanguard with their vanguard. But you do not have to return overlords to the deck. They can be grade three flame dragons, and blade master is a grade three flame dragon, so um, you can actually use him. So this is definitely a good card to have, in my opinion, but only as a one-of. If this was the cross, then I would be playing two of this. But <clears throat> as a Blade Master deck, I would only play one. So. So guys, that is my Overlord Blade Master deck. I hope you enjoyed it. Um, a lot of fun to play. Um, I really enjoy this deck quite a bit. It's very consistent, very uh, control heavy. Um, so, um, you know, has everything that you could want in it from a Kagero deck. Um, I um, 
if you have played Kagero in the past and um, you enjoy it and you have not tried this build out, I highly suggest you do. It is a lot of fun to play, and I and it it's it's crazy how powerful this deck is and certain columns that it can create with Nadel and Radiant Dragon. So definitely give this deck a try, a check out if you want to try a different version of Kagero. So anyway guys, thank you very much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. In the comment section below, please tell me your thoughts. Um, if you want to share your thoughts on your personal builds, I'd like to hear that too. I always like to hear your guys' thoughts. Thank you very much for watching and I'll see you next time.